This week on the droids, it is chapter 8, The Mandalorian, season 1 finale has aired on Disney+. Plus. We're going to talk all about it, we meaning me, on this edition of the droids. Welcome back to Sam Says Stuff. That's what we're calling this solo edition. Solo, not a Star Wars story. Solo, a Star Wars podcast, of course, featuring me, Sam. I am sadly lost, alone, adrift. You are not alone. Neither are you. That wasn't very good. Uh, Look, guys, it's just me. I've got nobody to back me up. I've got no safety net. I've got no mic to keep me on task. I've got no Ryan to to give me that perfect Ray impression. And I've I've got no solid solid theories from chris this week it's just me um but we didn't want to leave you hanging since it's a big day uh a big day part of a big week part of a big month um for all things star wars i mean uh everybody who's who's listening out there who's a fan knows uh we have been absolutely inundated and um and so we're just going to do a bit of a recap a fair warning there will be spoilers for uh mandalorian chapter eight the episode is titled Redemption, written by John Favreau and directed by Taika Waititi. Um, I will be going through the episode uh, and, and, and spoiling that episode. Uh, and rest assured, we're going to get all of the droids weighing in on this episode, on all the episodes, on the season as a whole, on what we think is coming next in a future episode. But um, obviously, we just wanted to, to, to get this out to you and... Um, you know, uh, our last episode, I, you know, we're a little tepid. We're 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 a little tepid on the rise of Skywalker, and I think that's fair. And I'm delighted for all of you out there who 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 are up on that movie and who are feeling it and who are who are loving the conclusion of the saga. We've got a ton of episodes in the pipeline, uh, diving more into the rise of Skywalker, the good, the bad, the ugly, what we thought. Um, but this is just going to be. We won't. Uh, um, I'm going to police myself and make sure uh, I'm going to commit now. Won't be spoiling that, uh, even though if you're listening to this episode, you probably heard our last one and we got into it. Um, but anyway, as I said, spoilers for Chapter 8. Uh, Red Mando Redemption. Red Redemption. Red De- Redemption. Popular word this year. Um Look in this episode, we get the uh, we get the conclusion to to chapter one last uh, to to season one, excuse me, of the Mandalorian. Chapter seven left us with a cliffhanger where we saw um, Moff Gideon uh, surprise su- surprise us all and and kill his own troopers and uh, and, and kill uh, the one and only Werner Herzog, uh, you know, uh, and and pin down our heroes, uh, Mando Cara Dune and uh grief karga uh and uh and also we we sadly saw what was confirmed this week the death of kuil uh as two uh speeder bike troopers picked up baby yoda uh in his own peril um and then we pick up this week's episode uh right where that one left off we see uh we open with a with a bit of comedy i think you can really feel taika waititi's uh influence here um in what I just found to be a delightful scene uh, between the two the two speeder bike troopers, um, and uh, it sort of takes on a, a workplace comedy that I think uh, I think Disney Plus is the perfect place for. Like, let's get that let's get that series we've all dreamed of about um, you know mid mid level uh, career you know imperial troops, um, but they're talking uh, about what happened. They they radio in. Uh, to see if they should bring the package in, and they're told to await further orders, um, because there's this there's this standoff, this showdown happening. Um, that scene 
uh, culminates with the uh, appear the appearance of IG Eleven, uh, Taiko Titi, uh, of course the the episode uh, chapter director, um, you know, reprising his role as the as the reprogrammed nurse droid to Baby Yoda, who is uh, you know I guess the most dangerous protector, um, the most the most dangerous mama bear in the galaxy now, um, and he uh, and he you know pretty brutally uh, takes out the. Uh, <laughs> you know but but comedically brutally i don't know i don't uh takes out the troopers and uh and begins uh we think returning baby yoda to uh to the ship um and is in contact you know gets into contact with um with our with the mandalorian um while they're pinned down we get a little bit more backstory we learn um that uh, you know, Moff Gideon knows who our heroes are. We learn that uh, he knows that Cara Dune is a rebel shock trooper. Uh, we learn that he knows the Mandalorian's origin story, and we learn that he knows the Mandalorian's name. It's revealed our Mando, our hero from season one, Din Djarin, which I thought was a great name. Very Star Warsian and very cool to to have it uh, revealed so late and have it revealed in the manner it was revealed. Um, they haven't pinned down, uh, and IG Eleven actually surprises everyone, bringing Baby Yoda into what we think would be, um, you know, the 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 dangerous uh, den, uh, nest of vipers, uh, and you know he takes out a number of the stormtroopers and joins our heroes where they are pinned down and begins working on an escape route for them. Um, or I guess before he comes in, they join the shootout and there's kind of a big the big shootout. We get uh, some really really you know well choreographed uh, fun action. We get to see a lot of stormtroopers blown away. Um, we get to see the cool uh they build the 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 troopers the imperial troops set up one of the like turret uh mounted you know mounted big guns that we see uh i remember them from hoth that's what i always think of them from um and i actually had that action figure i had a snow trooper that that came with the turret and the little energy pack so it was really great to see that stuff all back um and it comes into play because john carlo esposito takes a shot at you know while he has this chance blows up that energy module that's powering you know the ammunition or whatever that's powering this this big gun taking out his troops and uh, severely wounds the mandalorian and we're left with a moment where they retreat inside um and they're they're you know faced with uh, i guess they were previously faced with the ultimatum um but at this point they're um they're faced with escaping and the Mandalorian is, is, uh, resigning himself to death. And he, he wants a warrior's death. He's going to buy them time to escape holding off the troopers while they escape through some tunnels underneath the city. Um, as they, as they go, um, they, Cara Dune takes baby Yoda, grief Karga goes with them. Um, Oh geez. I skipped the big part. We get like, what's he called? Flame trooper. We get a flame trooper, uh, great design, red and white, cool, cool, you know, unique stormtrooper design. Um, bring in the flamethrower, and again, Baby Yoda stepping up with the force powers, doing the hand wavy thing, um, as grief later <laughs> later calls it in a in a funny callback. Um, and Baby Yoda stops the flames and, in fact, turns them on the trooper. Um, now we're up to the Cara Dune takes Baby Yoda, Grief Karga. They go through the escape, and IG-11 uh, is refusing to leave Mando and, in fact, removes his mask in a pivotal scene for the first time in the series, but while preserving and maintaining the Mando's honor as no human has ever seen him unmasked. Um, I thought this scene was great. Uh, this was really great character development, Um for the Mandalorian, uh, this whole episode, he really trusts this droid, which obviously we learned in the episode we saw droids murder his his parents and his clan uh, when you know when he was picked up 
as a foundling by the Mandos, um, setting him on his life's path. Uh, we know droids are to blame for that. Uh, we kind of explains his hatred. We've seen it repeatedly throughout that he uh, kills droids with extreme prejudice. Um, and so this trusting moment between he, him and IG-11 is really, really touching from a character standpoint. It also plays, uh, you know, in a, in a humorous way because it, it gives the audience what they want. We finally see Pedro Pascal as Din Djarin under the mask. Um, but, you know, we, we also, uh, and we get some, uh, some, uh, a good joke about, um, you know, main processor damage or something. Um, he read uh, so so they uh, they move down to the tunnels and uh, guys, geez, am I flying? I can't tell. I'm not used to doing this alone. I need my I need I need my buddy boys. I'm just trying to get through the the, the beats of the story, um, and then I'll I'll highlight some favorite moments. So we're we're probably a little over halfway, right? They're in the tunnels. Um, Ig Eleven and uh, and and Din join them. Um, they meet up with the armor, who's the last remaining Mando. We see that all the other Mandos from from his his clan, his tribe, have abandoned their armor in in, in a desperate move at survival and, and hopefully a chance to escape the city when the Imperials arrived after their you know assistance uh, of of his escape um, and you know in betrayal of the guild. Um, but the armor is still there. Uh, she she gives him. Uh, sort of the two final pieces of the puzzle. She gives him that jetpack, which, I mean, as soon as we saw those, I knew this was coming, uh, and I'm delighted it's here. Um, she gives him the jetpack, and then she also gives him his signet, uh, and it's a, a Mandalorian symbol um, for, I think it's for two or for a pair. Oh, boy. I watched it at 6 a.m. this morning, uh, Eastern time, and it's after work, so forgive me but it's a cool symbol it goes on his shoulder he's got a signet he earned it uh he rejoins with his friends and they they move to uh to sort of a molten lava way it's you know hopefully to escape these tunnels uh and get to their get to their ship there's an ambush of of troopers waiting for them and ig11 uh after some debate about primary programming uh confirms that the mandalorian will accept his role to to protect baby Yoda, which absolves IG unit of his primary protocol of protecting the baby. At which point the IG 11 that we saw ready to ready to blast and blow away baby Yoda in chapter one of the series sacrifices himself, uh, pulls the pulls a pulls a grandma from Dante's peak and walks that little boat down that lava, lava flow river um, and activates his self-destruct, uh, which is his secondary core programming, uh, so as his uh, you know his his design specs and and everything can't be can't be stolen if he if you know as a hunter, um, you know it's a it's a great scene. Uh, it takes out all the troopers. Then we're left with our with our three heroes plus Baby Yoda, um, and whatever happened to Mob Gideon? Nobody ever saw him get his well. He, he comes. He comes in here, flying in, zip, zipping and zipping and buzzing in on a Tie Fighter, um, blasting at them. They're shooting. Cara Dune knows it's pointless. They can't penetrate the armor, and we get to see uh, what is a truly you know awesome, exciting moment. Um, it's got to be where some of the budget goes on this show, where uh, Mando activates the jetpack, and at the next pass. Um, you know, launches up just in front of the the Tie Fighter on his pass. Uses his grappling gun to hook on and and zip to. He's he's you know, there's some kind of like old school you know aerial stunt work you know look at type stuff, wing walker kind of things that you see in the the old adventure movies. Um, and uh, you know, after determining he can't penetrate the 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 you know windscreen of the Tie, uh, he uses. Uh, some of his replenished, um, like, I don't know what, like limpet mines, like his mines uh, on the wing. Um, he gets them planted, he lets go, blows off the wing, you know, catches himself in the air on his jetpack just in time. And, uh, and we see the, uh, the TIE fighter uh, come crashing down. Uh, at this point, 
we get a nice little wrap up from our heroes. We understand that Kara is going to have basically she's going to get that she's going to get the clean slate from Dark Knight Rises. That's a Batman reference. So ding one for there. When I was talking about Wing Wakers, I was Windwalker Wing blah, Wing Walkers. I was kind of thinking of that scene in Octopussy where uh, not Roger Moore is uh, you know out on top of the plane. So we can count that as a uh, Bond reference um, for those of you playing bingo at home. Um, but our, uh, you know, Cara Dune is going to get the clean slate and join the, uh, the bounty hunters guild with grief. Who's going to, who's going to set up shop right where he was, uh, uh, on this, this same planet that we've, uh, that we've spent time on. I, I, I forget the name of this too. It's given in the episode, but they're going to stay put. Um, now that all the Imperials have been wiped out, <laughs> um, and Mando is committed to, uh, to finding the true home of baby Yoda and getting baby Yoda back to, uh, to his people. Um, which seems like a pretty strong setup for season two. Um, if that wasn't enough, we get a final look at the end of the show, uh, as some Jawas are stripping the, the downed tie fighter, uh, Moff Gideon. Well, we see a blade come through, carve out an opening and Moff Gideon rises holding what I learned today was a dark saber, um, which is uh, for all you Filoni heads out there. Uh, you'll recognize that from uh, Clone Wars or Rebels. I'm not sure which it's it. It, it appears farther than I am in um, on either of those uh, those shows. Um, but it was a cool callback. And he's, you know, looking to the sky, uh, clearly, you know, a villain still to be reckoned with. Um, so that was just a straight play by play but man what what a what a phenomenal episode i think it really delivered on the um, character arc for for mandalorian um you know accepting his sort of pseudo fatherhood um you know uh, uh earning his rank and and receiving a you know uh sort of the 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 blessing uh of what he's doing from the armor oh man i skipped that the armor has an awesome fight where she uses her uh, her hammer and 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 you know vice grips uh you know that 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 are her forge tools to just brutally like crack a bunch of stormtrooper helmets um uh can't have been a nice scene after she was done um but that was really really cool to see her i'm i'm sure we'll see her back um like i said earlier we got this sort of uh you know we 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 got the re- resolution of his his childhood and how he came to be a mandalorian despite not being born there which we confirmed um you know we we had him find peace with at least some droids um i think gina carano was again really really good in this in this episode i think man they really found a perfect way to use her i think she's really really solid she has some funny moments with uh with with baby yoda as like as like you know, this isn't her thing. Like childcare, not what she's about. Um, you know, grief has has a really uh, you know a couple funny moments. Um, you know, he takes a takes a drink during the uh, the the Western style you know shootout, um, and and of course he has the you know maybe the funniest line of the episode when he he looks to Baby Yoda as the uh, Tie Fighter approaches and he says, "Do the do the hand wavy thing, do the hand wavy thing," and we get a very cute little wave just like a hello wave um to grief from baby yoda um the action was really really good it was you know it's it's still man star wars has been around a long time i've certainly been watching it since i was like oh i don't even remember what i said somewhere around that like five to seven year range is when i first saw it and it is so so satisfying to see stormtroopers just get get blown away um, it's, it's really, really, you know, you just don't have to feel bad about those guys getting, uh, getting brutalized. Um, I thought the intro, uh, which was, uh, Jason Sudeikis and, uh, um, let's see who else, who else was that? I think I saw it earlier. Uh, yeah, here it is. It's, uh, Adam Pally. So Jason Sudeikis and, uh, and Adam Pally are the, are the scout troopers. And I just thought that intro was, was really funny, um, from them and then i guess the the big the the elephant in the room 
we got to talk Gus Fring. We got to talk Giancarlo Esposito. Um, bugging out. Uh, what you know? What what perfect casting? He's really, really so good in this episode. He's he's frightening. He's chilling. He is calm and in control. Um, and and I think is is kind of beautifully set up to to remain the villain. I you know I I'm. I'm certain he'll be back, and I hope he's back in a big way, because um, we only got him in in chapters seven and eight, uh, and he was just he was so so delightful. Um, you know, he has this great uh, beat where he uh, where he offers them you know a chance to surrender, and Grief Karga asks you know what assurances they have that he'll keep his word, and he tells him none. He'll, the only assurance he'll give is that he's interested most in self-preservation. So, you know, he he knows he has the upper hand, or he at least appears to, before IG-11 shows up, and uh, and he's completely unwilling to compromise, and and what a, a you know, and completely willing to kill not only you know our heroes who stand in his way, but uh, but but to kill his own men if necessary. Um, I just thought, you know, I just thought he was great. Um, you know, I think the cast we have moving forward is awesome. I think we could definitely, you know, still see Taika Waititi return. I mean, what a great idea. Cast yourself as a droid. You can kill yourself as many times as you want. You can always come back as another another unit, a different number. Um, so I doubt this is the last IG model uh, we have seen or will see in this show. Um you know, there there were a few things that were unresolved from this from this series so far. You know, we may go back, but we you know we didn't get any resolution on on chapter four, um, Bryce Dallas Howard's episode where we had the the you know fishing community. You know, we don't have any uh, resolution with that woman who uh, who seemed to be the the brief you know one episode almost maybe love interest for for Mando. We don't know what her backstory was, why she was such a good shot, or was it just lucky? Um, you know, we don't get any uh, resolution on Fennec Shand, which was uh, a, a bit of a bummer. I, I think um, it definitely appeared as though they were hinting that maybe she, uh, Fennec Shand, the the assassin, uh, the assassin guild member from Chapter Five. Um, you know, it seemed that they were hinting she might yet live uh, as someone approached her in the desert, and we don't know the identity of that person who had spurs that work on soft sand. What I mean. It's clearly a force user because they're it's clearly a force user um you know i've i've heard people speculate that it's boba fett that that took place on tatooine which is a hint that that you know he has survived the sarlacc pit um i had i had speculated that it was that it was moff gideon that didn't you know what was neither confirmed nor denied by this episode i was also wondering would our boy obi be wearing spurs we know he's on Tatooine. We know he's got a series coming. I could just about see somebody, you know, setting that up. Be great to see Fennec Shand as a as a, a recurring character in his series. Um, but we don't know. You know, there's 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 yet there's yet much to be learned in the wider world. Um, let's see. I think. I think that's about it. Oh boy, uh, do I have any remaining questions? I guess the big one that I that I have is is to our listeners and and to my fellow droids when they're on and join me. What do we want to see from this show? What do you think? I mean, is the arc of finding and returning Baby Yoda um, to his home world and his his you know maybe family? Uh, you know, is that that certainly seems enough to me. To, to, to run a series and keep this kind of lone wolf and cub thing going. Um, uh, I certainly want to see the return of all the characters featured in this week's episode, uh, as I already, a uh, chapter, um, as I already mentioned. Um, I think it's a great opportunity. Look, we're going to probably learn more about Mandalore and Mandalorian culture, which I'm excited about. We may finally learn more about, I'll just call it Yoda culture. I saw an interesting theory that suggested that perhaps Yoda's race could itself be, since it's never been unveiled, what species or race Yoda is, you know, it could be unveiled that, you know, what if Yoda is like 
the Jedi? What if their species is the Jedi? And that's why they're born so strong in the Force. Um, you know, will we see, will, will we see Dagobah? We know, we know, we know, we know those little guys love Dagobah. Will we see Yaddle? Who could say? Who could say? Look, we're gonna get into it. We'll do our speculation. We'll do a full uh, a full season recap. Um, but man, what a strong way to go today! I, I woke up. I watched this episode, and while I was at work, um, I I listened. Uh, yeah, I was back at work. I listened to uh, to the Last Jedi, which just got added to Disney Plus, um, which as an app on your phone lets you like while streaming a movie, like turn off your screen and keep the audio playing, which is just Oh, what a dream. It's such a dream come true. I'm so happy about it. Um, that's a pro tip for all of you who like to, uh, you know, listen to your uh, watch Um That's what I did today. And man, what a just delightful day of Star Wars. I know that The Last Jedi has, you know, there are fans out there listening to this who are going to disagree, but I got to say that movie is so tremendous. And just what what a 180 of a day um you know to this time last week uh you know i'm still i'm still struggling with rise of skywalker um we have a lot a lot a lot uh as i said before to dig into and we're going to be bringing that to you in the coming weeks um with with some great uh you know some great episodes some one-offs some new rankings we're going to talk about um you know just dive into our thoughts more specifically uh i know you know chris and mike have both seen the film again um chris a few times so uh i'm eager to to hear what their takes are but man i was down i was struggling i was struggling to feel the love for star wars Uh, and and man the one-two punch of mandalorian followed by just such an awesome film um get on your disney plus watch the stuff that was added today and yesterday guys do do yourself a favor really just just soak it all in because uh because you know we don't know how long it's going to be till the new stuff hits um uh, well we know one thing that fall of 2020 season two of the mandalorian i'm just seeing on on the on the old instagram uh john favreau has posted uh oh this looks like one of those uh kind of piggy orc guard guys like from uh like from return of the jedi but like de-armored i don't know maybe i'm wrong but he posted a picture of, of kind of like a, a statue or maquette of, of that with the announcement officially fall 2020. So uh, I guess it's like, well, I guess that's, it's, it's like, it, it's like nine months. It's like the gestation period for a baby, a baby, not a baby Yoda. I don't know. They're probably longer because they age so slowly. Maybe they're in there for like a while. Oof. We'll get into that too. We'll get into what we'll learn all about that. Man, do you have to like carry those suckers around for a long time? Oh, I feel bad for the the lady. I feel bad for the yaddles out there. Um, but maybe it's a great bonding experience. Maybe it's easier than who knows. Look, this this is the kind of this is the kind of investigative journalism that I know you guys all come to the droids for. I know it's why you you know come specifically to you know Sam says stuff. Um, Sam says stuff, TM, a trademark uh, of the droids you're looking for, Star Wars podcast. Um, Guys, I had a blast. What a great day. What a great, great day for Star Wars. They did it. We have a live, season one is in the books. We have a live action Star Wars show, folks, and Dave Filoni's involved, and John Favreau's involved, and the Howards, God bless them, are involved. Um, I hope you all had as much fun as I did. Like I said, um, you know, I well, I was gonna say I was keeping this episode short. So much for that. It's been thirty minutes. Um, this is a long episode of 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 Mando. This is our longest yet, nearly an hour. Oh, so great, so much fun. Uh, I hope you all had fun. Send your thoughts. Uh, Twitter at Droids Pod, Instagram at Droids Pod, Facebook the Droids you're looking for, and hit us up at Gmail, DroidsPod at Gmail dot com. Uh, happy holidays, happy life day, happy Christmas, happy Hanukkah, happy New Year's, uh, happy Mando season one day, guys. Um, hit us up, let us know your thoughts, 
talk us through what your what you you know what what your Star Wars moments here were this December. That's chock full of them. Join the conversation, get involved, um, and we'll have uh, we'll have a lot coming your way. As I've mentioned, ad nauseum. Speaking of ad nauseum, I've been talking ad nauseum. So how about I get out of your ears and let you get on with your weekend? Um, this. We'll do it. That will do that 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 that, 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 that's all, folks, for the droids you're looking for, a Star Wars podcast. Um, uh, you boys wanna hop on the uh, Rise of Skywalker? The uh, Rise of the Resistance, I mean. Oh god, I didn't do it. Uh oh, boring conversation anyway. <laughs> He has no idea what he's talking about. He has no idea what he's talking about. He has no idea what he's talking about.